today, I'm Kathy Jackson. I'm teaching you about Christian Science. It was started back in the 1800s by a Mrs. Baker E. or Ed. She was born in New Hampshire in 1821. She was raised in a Puritan faith um, that she didn't fully believe in. And she was a very sickly person that had a lot of struggles with her health as she was growing up. So when she was married, she lost her first husband suddenly while she was pregnant with her first son. The pregnancy was very difficult on her and caused her to have a lot of health issues. So someone else stepped in to raise her son. At this time, she started looking into holistic healing and um, mystic healing, and she found a Dr. Quincy. That, that was back in 1862. So he, she went to see him to try and get some relief from her pain, her back pain, and he was able to help her to heal and feel better about herself. So she was very much fully involved in this. Uh, at that time, later in 1866, she had a severe fall, which caused excruciating pain. Her story was that she almost died from it, and that doctor told her she only had three days to live, and that she self-healed herself. Around that same period, Dr. Quincy passed away, and Miss Edie took all of his literature and started to plagiarize it, and started writing a, a story on her own that created um, Bibles, stories that she thought were fallacies, that they were not uh, accurate in any shape or form. And with that, she added her own thoughts, and she wrote it up, and it became the Book of Science and Health. The church was started in August, on the 23rd of 1860, no, 1879. So it took a few years for her to get it all together and to get someone to actually correct all the writing that she had done. So to the church members, she became known as mother and she put herself on a spiritual level with God, that she was not actually made in um, a materialistic person. She did not, the matter did not exist to her. And she took that out of the Bible in Genesis 2, where Adam was said to be created out of dirt. She felt that was absolutely wrong and said that we were not made out of dirt when Adam was put to sleep, that he never actually woke up because the Bible did not tell us that. So at that point, she, did, she decided that we were all spiritual beings and that as long as we stayed in the spiritual being, we would be one with Christ, or one with God. Sorry, I'll get to Christ in a minute. But she said that God, um, because he made us in his image, therefore we had to only be spiritual. And if we took on anything that was away from spiritual, then we were going to sin. And because sin didn't exist in her mind, that created an issue. So when she had all her pain and suffering that she was coping with, she said that there were evil influences that were working against her body. And because of that, she had to get out of her head and go back into the spirit form. And so she had doctors come over to administer morphine. And at that point, she said anyone who was in excruciating pain could have that done and to relieve that so that they could go back into their spirit form and heal themselves, that the pain was putting a block there. So what she came up next with was the mental anguish. If anyone suffered from mental anguish um, that came to her, she said that they were still living inside their human form and that because we were not supposed to be human, they had to get out of that and had to, to go deeper and to release all the pain that was coming at them. Um, and that way they would stop all their suffering. So she said it was called metaphysical healing. Again, she was into the mysticism very deeply. So. That's where she decided that God was all in all, which is, a, as we know, a pantheistic viewpoint. And she said that evil does not exist. That's actually an illusion. That Satan, um, the devil as we know him, is known as a malicial, malicious animal magnetism. Say that a few times. So he um, did not exist in her mind. That God was so good that he could not have created evil. That evil was just not something that would manifest in, in God through his love. That's what he was to her. God was love. So she wrote a few more things about it, saying that um, there was no trinity. That the trinity to her was not God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. She said it was life, truth, and love. Um, and in doing that, she took Jesus and took away who he is to all of us as Christians. 
She said that Jesus Christ never was a deity, that he did not come down when he became a man. He actually was a man, that he was not God, and that he came as a way to shine the light and to show us how to get to heaven. That was his purpose here, that his blood was not what cleansed us of our sins because, again, there is no sin, so therefore you would not need the blood of Christ to take that away from you. All you had to do was get in your head to get it gone. So when it came to Jesus dying for us, Jesus, in her mind, did not die. Jesus um, came out of the tomb still alive because he was still alive. And at that point, that's when the, the uh, disciples really started their faith and their believing and, and, and understanding that they were one with God so they could go out and heal because that was the Great Commission, that we would be healers. And so she really believed in that, that, that we could heal ourselves and we could help bring others to that point. So when people came to her that were suffering or in pain or, or felt that they were sinning and the sin was causing them pain, all they had to do was get inside their, their head and get out of it. And um, that way they self-healed. So they did not believe in death. They did not believe in cancer. And if you die, it's because, again, you went back into that human form and you had to stay out of it. So they would talk to themselves, that she taught them to say, I am, I am, I am, um, I don't know what I they would say, but I am not sick, I am not going to deal with this, it's going away from me, so that anything that we have, our back pains, our knee pains, headaches, all of that is just a manifestation of us falling back towards sin. And if someone wanted to be pregnant, well, then all they had to do was think it out, and then, therefore they would become pregnant. She said that women did not need men, that they could get pregnant on, them, on their own. There was a woman that said that did happen to her, that she gave birth to Jesus. And when uh, Mary Eddie found that out, she had the woman removed from the church when the, when the child showed up to the school that they created. He was forcefully, forcefully removed by his neck out of the building. So um, they have their own healing places. They have one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast. They're called sanitariums. And they are to go there if they cannot get out of their head and, and get back into the spirit form so that they have time to get there. So if someone were to come in for counseling, knowing all of this would help you because if they if if prayer is mentioned prayer of them is evil because that is opening the door for sin to come into your life you don't actually pray about it you would pray to each other and so on sundays when they have service um this this church across the nation all churches will read from the book of, of um science and health that miss E.D. wrote she wrote a few others as she was aging. Um, and in that book, they will pick out certain things that they're allowed to read that Sunday. They will sing praise songs, but they all do the same exact thing. And therefore, they're all on the same page. So when Missy created this um, cult, she made it authoritarian where no one could come in and change any rules of this church that she was the only one in charge to do that. There was a board of directors that created, that she helped bring into the church, and she would continue to rewrite science and health and update it, not with any new revelations or anything else, because she felt that God told her all of this that she was to say, that that was where this came to be, similar to Joseph Smith in that regard. And so she would charge them for every time she updated the book, and they would need to buy that to order to stay faithful to her. And then she, part of their doctrine that she came up with was that they had to go out and actually had to sell this book. If they did not participate in selling all the literature that she created, then they could be excommunicated again from this church. So that's how she ended up getting money from this. She was very clever in that way. And when she needed jackets to, to pray in or house coats, whatever she called them, um, she didn't tell the church, hey, you know, why don't you go buy me three of them? What she said is, why don't you guys donate money and, and feel led to give money so that I can just simply go get this humbly and just three is all I need. Well, in doing that, there were thousands of members at that time. And you can do the math, everybody gave. She ended up making a lot of money off them. So she was not, um, was not broke. She had a lot of materialistic things for someone who did not believe in materialistic 
things to be in this world. So when, when someone comes in, if they are struggling with this church, if they have walked away from this church, these are some of the key things you need to understand that, you know, Jesus was not who he is to us, um, that he became just a person um, as the um, Buddhists or as Muhammad or any of these people teach that he was just a prophet. Um, he was just someone in, in, in the shape of man, that he was not God's son, that he was not I am. Um, and that is a big, big um, shift in what we believe. So they, they have that taken away from them. And they, they will come across um, very believable if you read their literature. And in that regards, you have to be careful what they will talk to you about because it will sound very true and very humbling and, and very sincere. And that in itself can cause problems with trying to get through to them to make them see where things are at. So, you know, we don't, we don't try to change them. We don't try to um, make them believe in um, our faith. But these are things that, that, that will help you to help them help themselves to, to see if this works for them. Why are you here? What's helping? What's not helping? What's going right in your life? And just expand a little more on that. Um, because it's hard to stay in a world of spirituality instead of actual human. Because we are human and we do suffer. So that is something that they will have to try and come to terms with. Um, because as they age, we all know, our bodies start to fall apart and they start dying. And that is something that, that will probably test their faith um, and make them feel that they're not good enough to be a, a Christian science member. And so in that regard, um, I hope this helped all of you to know this and to understand where a Christian science member would come from. The church is on its way out. The numbers are falling. Um, because no one is allowed to change any of these core beliefs. They have to stay as he placed them. Um, and in doing that, she tied their hands to, to grow and, and change. Um, so that's where we're at with this faith. Hope this all helps y'all to understand a little deeper and understand where someone, if you run across them, really is coming from in the Christian science world. Thank you for your time.